This video is brought to you by 23andMe. Help support this channel and discover more about your own DNA by going to www.23andMe.com slash name explain. The modern human has been around for an estimation of 200,000 years, and while that is a huge amount of time, in the grand scheme of planet Earth's estimated 4.54 billion years, we are a mere blip on the radar. But of course, this doesn't mean that for all that time there were no humans, then all of a sudden, poof, humans appeared. No, not at all. Before the modern human, there was a lineage of now extinct ancestors to the human race. These species didn't have names when they were around, that we know of, and have retroactively been given names. And of course, this isn't a breakdown of every step in the evolution of humans. I'm no Charles Darwin, but an interesting look at some of our ancestors and the names we have given them. One of man's oldest known ancestors is the Auroran Tugunensis. Remains were discovered in 2001 and the species was thought to live 6 million years ago. Believed to be around the size of a modern chimpanzee, the upper femur fossil of one was discovered and showed evidence of bone buildup typical of a biped, leaving people to believe that this species not only climbed through trees but could walk on two feet. The name of this species comes from the Tugun language. This is because the fossils of this species were first discovered in the Tugun Hills in Kenya, with Auroran meaning original man in Tugun and of course Tugunensis part coming from where the fossil was discovered. Before the discovery of Auroran, the Ardipithecus genus was thought to be our earliest ancestors. Two species of this genus are known to us, Ardipithecus rambidus and Ardipithecus cadaver. Rambidus is thought to have lived 4.4 million years ago while Kadaba was earlier living around 5.8 to 5.2 million years ago. The name Ardipithecus comes from combining the Afar language word Ardi, meaning ground or floor, and the Latinized Greek suffix Pithecus, meaning ape. This is because it is thought that these apes roam the ground as well as climbing trees like Auroran. The Ramidus name also comes from an Afar word, Ramid, meaning root, as they believed Ardipithecus Ramidus was the root of the ground apes and the root of the human evolutionary tree. Kadaba, however, was discovered after Ramidus. It was thought to be the older of the two species, so its name means oldest ancestor in the Afar language. Australopithecus afarensis is one of the most famous prehistoric human species. They were thought to roam our earth between 4 to 3 million years ago and the species survived for more than 900,000 years. That's longer than we have been on this planet. They had both ape and human characteristics with ape-like faces, small canines like other early humans, and stood on two feet walking upright. The name comes from a mix of Latin, the Australo coming from Austral, the Latin word for south, the Greek Pithecus meaning ape, and Afar, the region of Ethiopia where the fossil of the species were first found. The species is so famous due to the discovery of Lucy, the fossils of a female Australopithecus afarensis found in 1974. When discovered, Lucy was already over 3 million years old, and 40% of her skeleton had been fully preserved. On the night of her discovery at the campsite where the dig site was, Donald Johansson, Lucy's discoverer, played a Beatles tape. When Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds played, someone asked him, why don't you call it Lucy? And of that, Lucy became one of the most famous fossils ever. Finally, between 2.4 million to 1.4 million years ago, we come across the earliest member of the Homo genus, Homo habilis. The Homo prefix stuck with the rest of the evolution of humans and is still with us today. The Homo prefix comes from Latin meaning man or human being, with the habilis meaning handy, apt or fit. This handyman name is due to the fact that Homo habilis was thought to be the first of the species to create stone tools. As well as their tool making abilities, Homo habilis shared other traits with modern humans, such as a larger brain and smaller face and teeth in comparison to apes. Homo erectus lived between 1.89 million and 143,000 years ago. Homo erectus is believed to be the earliest form of human to have modern human proportions, with longer legs and shorter arms in comparison to what came before them. So of course with these more modern proportions, Homo erectus stood upright, hence where the erectus part of the name came from, meaning upright, erect. Yes, I said erect. Let's all be sensible adults and move on now. <laughs> erect. Homo heidelbergensis was shorter with a wider body and a flatter face compared to humans older than it. This different body shape could have been due to the fact that Homo heidelbergensis was the first known human species to live in colder climates. 
and this colder climate can be found in its name. The species is named after the German town of Heidelberg, where the first fossil of this type of human was discovered. The ensis suffix comes from Latin, meaning native of or relating to. I should have mentioned that earlier with Auroran tugenensis, but literally millions of years have passed since then, as it's thought that Homo heidelbergensis lived between 700,000 and 200,000 years ago. Homo neanderthalensis, which is more popularly known by its nickname of just Neanderthal, lived between 400,000 and 40,000 years ago. They were much like us in some ways. They could control fire, they wore clothes, hunted and made shelters. However, they looked somewhat different to us with much larger noses and being shorter and stockier than us. The name Homo neanderthalensis too comes from the fact that the first fossils of Neanderthals were found in the Neander Valley. Neanderthals are usually thought to be the last species of human before us, but in more recent years, a new extinct species of human has been discovered. Homo floresiensis lived between 100,000 and 50,000 years ago. It's thought they lived in complete isolation as their remains have only been discovered on the island of Flores in Indonesia, hence the name floresiensis. What's so interesting about this species is that while they hunted and used tools much like us and the Neanderthals, they stood approximately at 3 feet and 6 inches tall. Unsurprisingly, they have been nicknamed hobbits for, well, obvious reasons. And finally, after these millions of years of evolution that I have abridged into a few minutes, there's us, the Homo sapiens. We stand tall, but we are not called Erectus. We create tools, but we are not called Habilis. So what earned us the title Sapiens? Sapiens comes from New Latin, meaning wise, meaning Homo sapiens means a wise man. The name we have given ourselves and what separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom is our minds. It's our brain power that has allowed us to become this planet's dominant species, to create civilizations and make huge scientific leaps, and even got us to the point where this dumb monkey can make the video you are watching right now. Now, did you know some of us still have Neanderthal variants in our DNA? I have 286 variants in my body, meaning just under 4% of my DNA is Neanderthal, and I know this thanks to 23andMe. Thanks to them so much for sponsoring this video. The name 23andMe comes from the fact that human DNA is organized into 23 pairs of chromosomes, and their personal genetic service was created to help people understand themselves better thanks to their DNA. 23andMe allows you to look deeper into your ancestry and see how your DNA breaks out globally and even lets you connect with people you share DNA with. As well as finding out about the people who came before you and the people who you share DNA with, you can find out more about yourself too thanks to 23andMe showing you how your DNA impacts your well-being, such as your caffeine consumption or sleep quality, or even things like how your DNA affects your hair colour or taste preferences. Yet the thing I love about them is all the weirder stuff, like I now know I am much more likely to smell asparagus metabolite in my pee. 23andMe can also help you bond with your entire family, especially as Thanksgiving draws closer for our US friends. Throughout Thanksgiving, 23andMe are promoting a special Thanksgiving family offer which you can check out for yourself and get kits for the entire family. With everyone around the dinner table with their 23andMe results, you can find out if dad really is the Neanderthal of the family, or just acts like that when the football is on. There's so much waiting to be discovered about your family's DNA, which you can discover by heading over to www.23andMe.com slash nameexplain in the description below and by checking out their Thanksgiving family offer and by taking advantage of their sales. Not only will you find out about you and your family's genetics but you'll be supporting this channel in a huge way. Once again that link is www.23andme.com slash nameexplain. Thank you.